satisfies the sinner sanction. That is a system even in the law court. The best lawyer gives evidence from the past judgment of the court without taking much trouble to establish his case. This is called the parampara system and learned authorities follow it without manufacturing rubbish interpretations. Ishwara Paramakrishna Satchit Ananda Vibraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Parana Paranam Let us all obey the Supreme Lord whose hand is in everything without exception. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the second hand of ten chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Bhagavatam is the answer to all questions. Shri Chaitanya Manavishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakatam Ayam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadatamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sakratatam Sahadana Satvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Sya Hey Krishna Karma Sindhu Hina Pandu Jagatpade Godesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Vyasadi. 
And Vyasadeva is the disciple of Narada Muni. So Srila Vyasadeva had heard it all from Narada Muni. And Narada Muni is the son of Brahma. So he heard it from Brahma. So in this way, the knowledge was passed. Brahma to Narada, Narada to Vyas. Vyasadeva to Sukadeva Goswami. And Sukadeva Goswami is speaking to Maharaj Pariksit. And Maharaj Pariksit, he is cursed to die. You know, so he, he wanted to know about what to think of at the time of death. How to prepare for death. So Sukadeva Goswami spoke the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now when Sukadeva Goswami was speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, you can see here, here's the illustration. You know, this is Sukadeva Goswami there, there's Maharaj Parishan, and there's all the people, they've all come to hear. It's not just only Maharaj Parishan, but you can see here in the audience, Srila Vyasadeva is there, and Narada Muni is there. So they've all come to hear. Sukadeva Goswami speak. The father has come to hear the son. And the, the guru has come to hear the disciple of the disciple. And so like, they're, 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 they're happy to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Just like Srila Prabhupada, sometimes he would ask devotees to speak. And sometimes he would ask ladies. He would tell different ladies, come and speak, tell, tell the audience about what you've learned. And, and Prabhupada would hear. And Prabhupada would be happy to hear his disciples speak. So, uh, here you have Sutta, Sutta Goswami. Now Sutta, Sutta Goswami, is the son of Ramaharshan Sutta. Ramaharshan Sutta. You know Ramaharshan Sutta? He was killed by Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram killed him. Ramaharshan Sutta. Now Ramaharshan Sutta, he was a disciple of Vyasadeva. He had been taught by Vyasadeva, but but he wasn't taught the Bhagavatam, he was taught something else. So Vyasadeva wrote many books, he wrote all the 18 Puranas, and he wrote Mahabharat, and he wrote Vedanta Sutra. So he wrote many different books, and he divided the Vedas, he divided the Vedas into four, and he gave each section of the Vedas to four disciples. One of the disciples was Ramaharshan Sutta. The Ramaharshan Sutta was in Naimisharanya. Naimisharanya is where all the sages came. Eighty odd, eighty odd thousand sages all went to Naimisharanya because they knew Kali Yuga was beginning. So they went there to do a great yagya, to perform a sacrifice because they knew Kali Yuga is beginning. It's a very inauspicious time. So all the sages came from all over, from everywhere. They all came there to Nanda to perform sacrifice. And at that time, they also uh, chose to put questions. So the, the head of the sages was Shonaka, Shonaka Rishi. And Shonaka Rishi, you can read in the very first canto, first chapter, Shonaka is putting questions, and he's putting questions to Sutta Goswami. Lord Balarama come there to Nandasharanya. Initially, Ramaharshan Sutta was speaking. Now, when Lord Balaram came there, everyone respected Lord Balaram. Everyone stood up, or they folded their hands, or they bowed down, 
they, they showed some kind of respect for Lord Balaram, except Ramaharsha and Sutta. Ramaharsha and Sutta didn't give any respect to Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram considered, because Ramaharsha and Sutta, he was sitting on the big seat. And he thought because he was sitting on the big seat that he didn't need to respect Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram was not happy. Lord Balaram is not different from Lord Krishna. Lord Balaram is also Swayam Bhagavan. He's also the God, the Supreme God, the Godhead. But Ramarsha Sutta is just sitting there and he's speaking. So Lord Balaram considered that this is not very good. This person is not born, he's not born in a pure Brahmana family, and he's not respect, he's not humble. He can that this person is not humble. So Lord Balaram took a kusha grass and pierced it, pierced the heart of Ramaharsha and Sutta. And Ramaharsha and Sutta died on the spot. So the sages were all shocked because, wow, you know, he was the, he was the one who was speaking to them. He was giving them knowledge. So 80 odd thousand sages were there. Oh no, Lord Balaram has come and he's killed Ramaharsha. So they appealed to Lord Balaram. They said, you know, we had given Ramaharsha Sutta a benediction that he would have a long life. And you killed him. Lord Balaram said, well, I can bring him back to life if you want. But he said, no, no, no. You are the Supreme Lord. You chose to kill him. We accept that. But we gave him the benediction of a long life. What about our benediction that we gave him? So Lord Balaram said, well, we can give that benediction to his son because the son is not different from the father. Just like father gets some money, so if father dies, the son will get the money, right? He inherited the property of the father. So Lord Balaram said, the Ramaharsha Sutta, okay, he's dead, but we can give that benediction to his son. So let his son have the benediction, let his son have a long life. So Sutta Goswami came and he became the, the speaker. And he's speaking to the sages in Naimasharanya who had come to do sacrifice. So he's explaining, Sutta Goswami is explaining to all the sages about what happened previously. When Sukadeva Goswami was speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. Because Maharaj Parikshit, Maharaj Parikshit is the, the grandson of Arjuna. So he's from the royal family, family of great devotees. The Pandavas are very great devotees. And Abhimanu was the son of Arjuna. And Abhimanu, had, he was a young man, he was married, his wife was Uttara, and she was carried. She, although Abhimanu was fighting in Kurukshetra war, his wife Uttara, she was pregnant. She was carrying a child in her womb. And, it, and during the war, of course, Abhimanu was killed. He was killed unfairly by so many great Maharatis. So, Uttara was a widow, but she had a child in her womb. And so she gave birth to her child. That child became Maharaj Parikshit. And Parikshit became the emperor of the world because the Pandavas retired. They didn't want to rule anymore and they gave up everything to Maharaj Parikshit. 
But in course of time, Maharaj Pariksit got cursed. It happened. Although he was a good king, he was very religious and pious and did a lot of good things, but he got cursed by another, by some young Brahmana boy. So he was cursed to die. So Maharaj Pariksit accepted the curse. He didn't try to counteract it. He just thought, all right, very good. It's wrong. Because he made a little mistake. He had done something wrong. So he, when he got cursed, he accepted it. All right, I'm going to die. Let, I have to prepare for death. So Maharaj Pariksit left everything. He gave up the kingdom. He put his son there and he, and, and he took off all his royal clothes and he put on a simple dress and he went to find somebody who could guide him to prepare for his death. So he had, he had many questions he wanted to ask. We often get people like that come to Krishna consciousness. They have many questions. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes that there are four kinds of pious people who come to Krishna. Chatur Vida Bhajanti Mam Jnana Sukriti No Arjuna Ato Jignasur Atati Jnanicha Bharatashava So Lord Krishna said these four kinds of people, they all have Sukriti Sukriti means they're pious, they've done good deeds, and that's why they've come to Krishna consciousness. So four reasons. Arto Jignasur Atati Gyani Cha Bharatasha. Some people, a lot of people, come in distress, especially in modern times. People are more in distress now than ever before. When Prabhupada was in America, so many people would come in distress. They'd come in the night, help me, save me, please, give me shelter. They'd come in the middle of the night just trying to get some shelter, someone to protect them from the material energy. So people are in distress, a lot of distress. Now people who don't have Sukriti, they will go, they'll go to the bar, they'll go and drink, or they'll go, they'll take some kind of intoxication. Some people even commit suicide when they're in distress. There's a lot of suicides. Young people also. So they have not they don't have sukriti, they don't have that piety to take to Krishna consciousness. So the, the but these people who come to Krishna, they have some kind of sukriti that they have come to Krishna to, in their distress. So what some people come in distress, some people come in search of material benefit. Maybe they have economic problems. Just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, it tells about Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was a young boy like this young man here, right? Dhruva Maharaj was five years old. What is your age? What is your age? How old? Oh, you're already big. Dhruva oh. <laughs> was only five. He went to the forest. Are you ready to go to the forest? To find God. Went to the forest to find God. Why did he want to find God? He wanted a kingdom greater than his grandfather. 
Dhruva Maharaj was the son of Uttanapada. Uttanapada was the son of Manu. And Manu was the son of Brahma. So Dhruva Maharaj wanted to have a kingdom greater than his grandfather. He wanted to have a bigger kingdom than anybody. And he went to his mother and he asked his mother, who will help me to get the kingdom? She said, well, people go to God, they pray to God, they have some need, they want something. So he said, where is God? So she said, well, people go to forest to find them. So Dhruva Maharaj said, all right, I will go also to forest. And he was only five years old. And he went to forest to do tapasya. Of course, Narada Muni came and Narada Muni told him, he said, oh, you're just a young child, you know, you should go home, come back when you're grown up. Hi, Riva. <laughs> yeah. You know, are you going to go home? And we tell you go home? You, you, know, you want to go home, be with your mother, right? <laughs> so Dhruva Maharaj said, no, I'm not going home. He said, I'm going to find God, I want to find Krishna. And so Narada Muni was pleased, he thought, very good, he's a good devotee. He's not going to go home to his mother. He's going to find God. So he went in the forest when he did his tapasya. And in six months, God came to him. Six months. So very great soul. So people come in search of a need. They have a need. People in distress, people in need. And then some people come curious. We get people come, what is this? Oh, what are you all doing now? Why are you singing and dancing? What is going on here? They want to, they're just curious. And other people, the fourth person, he comes in search of knowledge. They want more knowledge. So these four kinds of people, they're all pious people. They all have Sukriti because they have come to Krishna. So people who are curious, they can get the answers to all their questions. But sometimes you get people who come, they have a lot of questions, and then after a while they don't come anymore. And then you meet them and you say, hey, what happened to you? You used to come all the time, you always had so many good questions. He said, oh, I guess I don't have any more questions. So it didn't come anymore. So, people come, some people come in distress. People come in distress, when the distress goes, then they leave Krishna consciousness. Very well. The man, man it, one, one guy, his girlfriend, he had a fight with his girlfriend. Girlfriend said, go, I don't want you anymore. So he was, yo, I lost my girlfriend. So we preached to come and chant Hare Krishna. And then he was with us for a few days. And then he said, oh, I have to go now. What's wrong? Oh, I'll, I'll find, I want another girlfriend. <laughs> so we lost him. And somebody comes. They have no money, they have no job, they're in difficulty, they become a devotee, they're chanting, and they're distributing books every day. And then one day they meet a man, the guy says, hey, why don't you come and work for me? Oh, oh. They, they give up selling books and they go and work for the man. Go and sell the, whatever the man is selling. So you, People who come for different reasons, they all have to come to the platform of knowledge. If they don't come to the platform of knowledge, then it will be useless. They must come to the platform of knowledge. 
And Krishna said, of the four people, the best one is the one who has knowledge of me. And we find even people come to Krishna consciousness, they may not come, they may stop coming, but they never forget what they've heard. You know, you meet, a, you meet someone who used to be a devotee and say, hey, what happened to you? Uh, how are you doing? Oh, I guess I'm in Maya. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they know they're in Maya, you know. They know that much. They, they, they just can't get out of it somehow. Their karma is so strong that they're not able to fully take shelter of Krishna. Although they know Krishna consciousness is good. There are many devotees like that, you know, they were, they, there was this one devotee, uh, Surabi, his name was Surabi, he was an architect. And he came to India and he met the devotees and they, they said, hey, we're building a temple, maybe you can help us. So he said, oh yeah, okay. And he, he built, he actually designed the whole Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindava. He designed the Krishna Balaram temple, then he went to Bombay and he helped to design the temple in Bombay and Prabhupada Samadhi in Vrindavan, he designed all that. Yeah, he did a lot of work. He, he designed our temple in Hong Kong, if you see Hong Kong, the, 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 it's, a, it's in an apartment, but he made it like a temple. He, he did so many wonderful things. But at a certain point, he just, you know, just gave up Krishna consciousness and he got involved with other things and he was doing some jewelry business and stuff like that. And so, he admitted later, he admitted, he, he, just, he died a few years ago. But he had admitted that before he left the body, he said, the best years of my life were when I was in the world. He said, without any doubt about it. He said, the best years of my life were, was when I was in Krishna consciousness. So, people put the, the just because material energy is so strong sometimes, very difficult for them to get free from the material energy. But Maharaj Parikshit knew he only had seven days left to live. So he became very serious. You know, he was a devotee from birth. He is Vishnu Ratha. He was protected by the Lord when he was a child in the womb. At that time, Ashwatthama had thrown the Brahmastra weapon and tried to burn the baby. Actually, the, 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 Ashu, the Brahmastra weapon burned the baby, but Lord Krishna gave it a new body again. So the soul was the same, but he changed and gave it a new body, because one body got burned by the Brahmastra. So, Parikshit got the name Vishnu Ratha because while he was in the womb he actually saw Lord Krishna and he saw the Lord Paramatma Vicha, how he protected him. But somehow you know, he became the king and he had so many duties to do so he got very involved in ru ruling the kingdom and keeping Kali away the personality of Kali even came there, Maharaj Pariksit punished him and said, you can only stay where there's no sinful activities. But Kali protested, Kali said, but then I have nowhere to stay because there's no sin in your kingdom. In your kingdom, everyone is following the four principles. And if I can only stay where people are breaking the principles, there'll be nowhere. So Maharaj Parikshit gave him a concession that you can stay where there is hoarding of gold. Because where there is hoarding of gold, then the sinful activities will come. I mean, you see, today, the more there's economic development, the more there is sinful life. 
the more there is drinking and intoxication, gambling, all sinful activity. Now with the Chinese New Year, what does it mean? People will be more sinful, more intoxication, more meat, more like get all the things, all the sinful activity will be more during the big the holiday time. So my respiration became very serious because he knew he's going to die. So when, when that time comes, then certainly we will want to be ready to die. So Maharaj Pariksha wanted to get good association. So he gave up the family. Because if, you, if you're, you know, if you're attached, naturally with the family will be attached. You know? And you, you want to get away from the attachment, because you want to go back to Godhead, you want to get out of the material world. If we're still attached at the end of life, we'll come back again, we'll come back into that place. And you don't know how you'll come back. Just like Prabhupada told you about one man, he had a big house, a lot of money, and nice children, son, family and everything. Then the man died. But he was very attached to the big house and the sons and the next life he took birth, he became cobbler, repairing the shoes, and he would sit outside the house where he used to be the the master of the house. Now he's sitting at the door of the house, repairing the shoes. And his sons are coming, taking the shoes and beating him. So these kind of things happen to people. But we're still attached at the end of life. Next life, we come back into that situation. So before the end of life, we have to break the attachment. And we see, like Vidura, came and preached to Dhritarashtra to get Dhritarashtra out of the house. So Prabhupada also, he got out of the house. Prabhupada was thinking, I will just stay at home, make money, I give money to my guru. But Krishna didn't want that. Krishna took away the business. Everything failed. And the family members also did not respect anymore because no money. So they didn't have any respect for it. So Prabhupada understood time to get out, get out from the house. So the Vedic culture is like that. We have to prepare. Maharaj Parikshit is preparing for the next life. And he has a lot of questions to ask. So, he's fortunate. Krishna sent a person to answer all his questions. Brahmanda Pramite Konya Bhagavanji Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. When we are traveling through the different Brahmana, Brahmandas, the university, but when we are fortunate, then we contact the devotees. And from the devotees, we get the seed of devotion. And when we get that seed of devotion, we have to nourish it. We have to water it regularly. The watering process is hearing and chanting. We hear and chant. And the seed will grow, our devotion, our bhakti will grow more and more. We have to go on hearing and chanting regularly. And then, when we hear and chant, then remembrance will come. We'll remember Krishna more. And we'll remember 
Now, death is coming. Have to get ready. Have to become very serious. So, Maharaj Pariksha became very serious. It's so serious, he did not eat anymore. He stopped eating. He did not even drink water for seven days. He just simply heard. He was hearing and putting questions from time to time. He would put some more questions to Sukadeva Goswami. And Sukadeva Goswami would answer them by referring to Parampara. So it's not that you just answer everything just from your own mind, but everything is based on what happened in the past, what did the other teachers say. So Sutta Goswami was answering the questions by telling him the histories that in the past, in the past, for example, the Purusha Shuktas, the, the, Shud, the, Pur, the, the Shutijaras, the personified Vedas, they were glorifying the Lord. So the Shutijaras, they glorified the Lord and their prayers were heard by Narada Muni. And Narada Muni told the prayers to Nara Narayan Rishis. And Nara Narayan Rishis they gave that same knowledge to, uh, who was it? Uh, I know we got Nara Narayan Rishi, they got the knowledge and then it was coming through Parampara. They passed on that knowledge. They, Nara Narayan Rishi live in Badarik Ashram. So Uddhava went there. Lord Krishna told Uddhava, you go to Badarik Ashram. Uddhava was a very dear friend of Lord Krishna. He was like secretary of Krishna. But Krishna was preparing to leave the world. So Krishna, Lord Krishna knew he was going to depart from the world. And before he departed, he arranged for all the Yadu dynasty to leave the world. But they fought with each other and they killed each other. So they all disappeared. And Uddhava, Lord Krishna wanted to protect him. He didn't want him to see, to be disturbed by all these things. So he told Uddhava, you go to Badarik Ashram and take the association of Nara Narayan Rishi in the devotees there. Uddhava went there and Uddhava had also received instructions from Lord Krishna. So Uddhava could tell also to the people in Badarik Ashram what were the teachings of Lord Krishna. So Vedic knowledge is not just something which comes from the mind. It, it's by hearing. We have to hear. This is Shabda Praman. Everything comes by. You hear and you repeat. So Prabhupada is also repeating what he heard from his spiritual master. And his spiritual master told what he had read, what he understood. Because Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he used to travel with his father. His father was Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur would be constantly giving lectures and classes. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would hear his father and later on, after Bhakti you know, left the world, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati repeated everything he had from his father. And Bhakti you know, Thakur learned everything by studying all the scriptures and the writings of the Goswamis and researching the different books, the different books of the different devotees. He would go to Vrindavan and he would go to people's homes, different Vaishnava's homes, and he would see who has got the library. And then he would look, for the, look at all the books in their library. And one day, he found the book, Upadesha Amrita, Rupa Goswami, 
A party in Otaku was extant. Wow, look at this, a book by Rupa Goswami. They, they never had of oh, Upadesh Amrita. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur copied the book, then he wrote commentary on it. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he wrote his commentary on it. And we have also Srila Prabhupada writing his commentary on Upadesh Amrita. So this is the Vedic system. Everything comes in parampara. This book, Srila Prabhupada is writing his commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. And now we have also Prabhupada's disciple, like Varijan Prabhu, he is writing his summary of Srimad Bhagavatam. He is even putting together the different quotes by the different acharyas because many acharyas they all commented on Srimad Bhagavatam, Jiva Goswami, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Baladeva Jabusa, and then Baba Acharya, Ramanuja, many of them they all have comments on the Bhagavatam. So some devotees are compiling books with all the different references different acharyas. So this is the system of hearing. We have to hear through parampara. Okay, any question? Hi, Griva. Any question? Yes? Seven year old, you should have questions. Well, generally, women should go with the husband, vanaprastha, right? The third stage, vanaprastha. Then if the husband's leaving the home, he'll go with his wife, retiring, right? The wife will go with the husband. If the husband is not leaving? If the husband is not leaving, then the wife has to stay home also. <laughs> The <laughs> wife has to go to temple every day. She can go to temple and associate. Yeah. Is there any Purana stories of uh, women living? That's not right. Women? Yeah, so women living their home. I don't know of any. Gandhari followed her husband to the restaurant, right? Drupadi, she followed her husband's. Uh, Rukmini also, not Rukmini, but uh, uh, Drupadi and uh, what, who, the other, Subhadra. She followed the Pandavas also. She was the wife of Kunti. They all, they followed. When the Pandavas retired to Himalayas, they went with them. Subhadra and Draupadi also went to Himalayas. They followed their husbands. But I don't know. You know, you have some women who never marry. That's different. You have women who renounce their whole life. Like, uh, Gopi Mata, Ganga Mata Goswamini, Ganga Mata Goswamini, she was renounced. She was given the title Goswamini, you know, but not a Goswami, but Goswamini, <laughs> right? Female Goswami. So she was a very renounced person. She lived in Germany. And uh, you have. Uh, Lord Nityananda's wife, Janava, she, of course, Lord Nityananda departed. So after Lord Nityananda departed, 
Then Janaba went to the Vrindavan and she went to Katuri to, to the first the first Gorpunima festival in Katuri and you know she was very very prominent, very respected. So of course her husband, her husband Lord Nichiman had already departed from the world. But uh, we don't hear about maybe Mirabai. <laughs> You know, what did she do? You know, her husband was not a devotee. They tried to poison her and everything. She would just worship the deity. Did she go to the Vrindavan? I don't, I don't know. But you have a, that kind of example nearby. Usually the woman, Vedic culture, the woman should not be independent. The husband doesn't go to your shop and maybe you have a son, take shelter of the son. Krishna arranges 